We've seen a lot of franchise firsts over the last couple of years. Tomorrow's going to be another one. First home playoff game for the Blue Jackets with a series lead as they have a two games to none lead uh, over Washington after back-to-back overtime wins. And, uh, John, I want to start there. I mean, we'll, we'll go back to what we've witnessed the first two games. But uh, tomorrow night in Nationwide Arena, when you came in, you talked about building this franchise brick by brick. And I know this is just – One piece of what we hope is a long story, but how special is it going to be for you to have that arena in an atmosphere and an opportunity like the Jackets have right now? Well, good afternoon, and uh, forgive me, I'm fighting a bit of a head cold. I think it's going to be exciting. Um, There's there's an atmosphere around the building that's been growing, which is really good, and that's not only the fans that come to see us every night, but the people that work there. And a lot of those people that work there have worked there for years and years and years. And uh, you, you just sense it. Everybody's excited. It's uh, It's been a process trying to get this franchise uh, on its feet and growing and getting better. We feel that we're getting there as we move along. And then I look at this series. I, I like the way we've played. That's hostile territory for two games. Um, I, I use an analogy with baseball. It's like uh, after winning game one, we got the first base. We won game two, and we're now at second base. Now we have to try to get the third base before we get home to win the series. So it's it's been it's been exciting. I I, uh, I look at this thing and try to remember some of the dog days and uh, knowing that we had to find good young players and draft them and then develop them. That's all falling into place here. So. It's it's a good time for us right now. What uh, the moves that were made at the trade deadline? Uh, obviously, since that deadline, the team has taken off. But uh, what Yarmo did in acquiring Vanek and Ian Cole and Mark Latestu, uh, obviously, some kind of switch has been flipped. Uh, all of a sudden, the team is yeah. scoring goals and they're playing so confidently and they played much better. But as you watch it on the ice, what what have those three guys and what has the team done to? make such a drastic difference yeah i i think that um prior to the deadline there was a lot of players probably not sure what was going to happen is somebody going to be traded what are the what is management going to do knowing that at the time we weren't playing great we weren't playing bad but we weren't playing great and we decided to look at all of our options uh, we had a lot of meetings and yarmo did a great job along with his staff we had a we had a long term injury to Josh Anderson, and we knew we had to try to find somebody. The the Vanek thing came to us. Um, I I learned many many years ago, as as uh, Yarmo and the management know, you can never ever have enough defensemen when you go into a playoff series. Mm-hmm. And uh, when we were in St. Louis running the Blues, Yarmo was running our draft, and uh, in fact, it was the year that the draft was right here in Columbus. And Ian Cole was one of our picks at the time, so we knew Ian quite well. And he's been a perfect fit playing with uh, David Savard. And then with Latestu, we needed help, especially on face-offs. We needed help with some experience on the fourth line as opposed to just getting young players in there. And uh, Mark was very excited to come back to Columbus where he had spent some time. And I think with all that happening, it, it, it looked to the players that are on the team that we're adding not subtracting. And they, I think, felt that if they had read their names about a trade or whatever it was, I think they felt more confident that they were going to be Blue Jackets the rest of the year and they're going to play and uh, and let's go. So everybody just climbed on board. And then you always hope that when you, when you add people that they fit. It's like a puzzle. You need the puzzle to fit before it's a, a completed puzzle. And these guys all fit. And it's been a real good role since since that point. Visiting with Blue Jackets President of Hockey Operations, John Davidson. Game number three, 730 in Nationwide Arena tomorrow night as the Jackets try to go up three zip on the Capitals. Two overtime wins, uh, two games in which the Jackets, uh, J.D., were trailing by two goals during the game. I I know you don't want to make a habit of that, but having said that, this team's resiliency, uh, and even during late in the regular season, we saw the three-goal comebacks. Where does that confidence uh, come from with these guys? Well, I think it even goes back to the trade deadline where they they just this this fit everything's fitting here, and um, I, I think when we had a comeback in Edmonton, we had a comeback in Vancouver, we had a comeback at home with Detroit. Yep. I think they they all believe that we can do this. It doesn't matter. Now 
there's been some good things that have happened over the first two games, but the reality is we got to start playing with a little more discipline to steal the penalty box. That's just it, it, it. You're asking for trouble, even though you just deal with it. You certainly deal with it, but we can be better in that area, and I think we have to be. But uh, there's been a lot of good things that, that have uh, that have gone on. Um, the depth has has helped to get through some different things. Um, I, I just I like the attitude of this team. The other thing is they're they're excited as a group, but they're not uh, a group that gets overly excited one way or the other. Bobrovsky's a classic example. Is he's like a real real good relief pitcher in baseball, where if you have a tough night or something happens during a game, you don't you don't get down on it. You just you have to stay level. And then when Bob plays as well as he has in this series and wins a couple of games, I usually go by and talk to him after the games. He's riding the stationary bike uh, to get all the lactic acid out of his legs and things. He's same mood, same same everything every single time. And uh, you, you learn to appreciate that as an organization. Don't get low. Don't get high. Have fun. And they are. Enjoy it. And they are. But keep going. As a as a former star goalie yourself, when you were watching the third period, well, the whole game yesterday, I mean, 58 shots, but especially yeah. the, they had 27 shots the Caps did in the third period in overtime. You mentioned the power plays they kept getting on, uh, and yeah. Bob was unbelievable. Uh, 27 he, shots. Yeah, in that yeah. third period in overtime, he only lets one in, which, you know, Oshie's goal. He, he was... I, I, what's going through your mind as you're watching the way the Caps are putting pressure on them uh, during that third period in overtime? Well, when I when I back it up even to game one, when we were down a couple of goals, uh, he had to lock it for us because if they get another one, it was going to be tough. Yep. And he did. He did. He locked it down, and we came back. We chipped away, chipped away, found a way, and, and came back. We didn't we didn't give them a whole lot of uh, of uh, offense at even strength in game one. I think they had seven, eight scoring chances at even strength, and that was it. But their power play gets chances. They're that good on it. And then then the game uh, game two, uh, the majority of their shots were on the power play. And that's what I'm talking about with us trying to, uh, to do our best to not take penalties that are that are deep in the offensive zone or, or whatever it is. You don't like the restraining fouls either, the hooking, the holding, the tripping, things along those lines. Um, you can avoid those. Sometimes penalties happen, but there's ones that are avoidable. There's there's action reaction. You don't want to take reaction penalties. You want to, you want their team to do that. So we we have to be better at it. But um, the the issues we've had to this point with it, uh, Bob's been very good at getting the job done. 